Welcome back everybody. This is episode two of season two. As you can see, it's nine o'clock and it's time to get to work here at Typhoon Legacy. Um, today's episode is going to cover off uh, more of the Merlin build. It'll be nice to get this all wrapped up and running, but for now we've got to really do a good push on getting the systems installed. And today I'll be mounting the oil tank, the fuel tank, and the radiator, as well as showing you a mistake I made, just so you know it happens fairly regularly. And uh, we're not immune to it here at Typhoon Legacy. So enjoy! So basically the function of this thing is a uh, backing block and a radius bar and they need to, they're bolted together just so it's easier to line up everything goes in there nice and straight however you do need to make sure that um, it's in a vise because that provides the clamping force that's used on this so you'll notice if i hold this just right you'll notice that it's actually offset meaning that um, because the the radius is dictated by the diameter of this you want it closer to the face of the backing block so basically right now this is upside down we need to bend like this so that these two surfaces are more or less level so i'm just going to line up my mark use it as a sight line at the top of the block just to make things easy and just get it lined up in here before i go ahead and put it in the vise throw it in the vise and apply copious amounts of pressure. <laughs> so now that gives you a nice radius to bend over, support on the back so it doesn't bow out, and uh, as long as you direct the blows with the hammer appropriately, it should work. You might notice that this isn't exactly precision. I have bowed it a little bit, a little tweak. And you can see it's a nice radius, there's no bowing back here. You can see, I think, you may be able to see, whereas striking this, the hammer blows are here and it's got a bit of a curve, so I'll have to take care of that, but uh, we'll do our bend first and see what's left. So essentially, that's how that's going to fit. Um, this is going to be the plate that goes over the radiator, and these are just the arms that attach it to the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and make that second one. I'll make it match the first one and uh, then I'll start trimming. Oh. 
That prop shaft is rather unforgiving when you bang your head on it. Boy, I can hit. One of the issues here with uh, the location of these and designing and installing this after the engine is mounted is the tight space here. So, um, Luckily with the 90 degree drill I, I've got the correct tooling to drill the holes but tapping those holes um, to receive bolts is another story. So what I've done with that is I have uh, a couple different tap wrenches here. This one was too long to spin in there but uh, I just cut the handles down. Uh, to make it work. I'm sure there's another application in the future that I'll need to use that for, um, but in this case it'll allow me to tap that properly. Another issue is that um, in that little space there it's really hard to see if my tap is perpendicular to the work surface. So what I've done is I've just taken another drill bushing. This drill bushing is an F so it uh, measures out at an internal diameter of 257 whereas the tap is 250 outside. So it gives me enough room that it slides on. Um, I don't have enough room for the bushing holder uh, that I have in there, so I'm just, I've made sure that the face of it's flat and I'll just hold that against the work surface and it'll keep me true, or at least true enough um, for this application. So that'll help me tap those holes nice and uh, perpendicular and uh, we'll get that radiator installed. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this back here. I can hold the bushing flush to the face, making sure that the tap is perpendicular to the work surface. And I'll just, uh, I'll hold it there and make sure that it goes in. I'm using a tapered tap right now. Um, so I want to make sure that I've engaged the full diameter of the thread on the tap before I really let go, just to ensure that everything's sitting as true as possible. A little bit of a turn backwards to clear the chip. Don't want to break the tap off in here. <laughs> It's not too bad, but uh, it's very close. I mean, I'm, with the through bolts on the oil pan for the Merlin, uh, the handle, I'm not too sure if you can see it in the camera, but the handle is coming very close to those. So uh, I'm, I'm fortunate I didn't have to cut the tap down to get in here, but that's always an option too. Uh, one of the drill bits that I used for this was actually, uh, you've got to drill for a quarter 28 thread, which is what we're putting in here. You've got to drill a number three uh, drill hole before tapping and uh, I had a number five threaded stubby drill bit but uh, not a three so I used a universal chuck and I took a drill bit cut it down turned down the shank of it and uh, stuck it in there and it gave me a basically a one inch long drill bit that fit in here and allowed me to uh, get the correct diameter of hole to tap you can always do that with a tap as well you just have to uh, grind it down square so you can use your tap handle so there we go. 
uh, nice threaded hole, good for the mount. I'll do that uh, three more times and we'll uh, look at a test fit on the radiator upper mount. This guy goes in there. There we go. Now it's just a matter of drilling and attaching the uh, rubber upper rubber support pads to the mounts that we have just installed. So I'll do a little bit of layout on that and then we'll remove it again, drill them, install the pads, and then uh, install it again temporarily until we're ready for paint. Feeling pretty proud of myself. I was showing Rob what I'd done with the mounting of both of those tanks and uh, mentioning that I believe that we needed to trim some of the hockey pucks that we use as isolation mounts on both tanks uh, once we reinstall the tongue on the trailer, which is currently removed for uh, safety reasons and space in the shop. Rob thought about it for a second and let me know that um, I made a bit of a mistake. And that is that the actual footprint for mounting the trailer tongue is underneath the two tanks that I just put on. So. <laughs> I had to completely remove this mounting system that I had done and uh, allow for the mount, correct mounting of the trailer tongue. With the mounts removed and a dedicated footprint for the tongue installation cleared, I created a new mounting system for both tanks and moved them inboard slightly. What I found when I did this was that it actually encroached on my intended design for the, um, the control panel mounting. So before I went ahead and I did any more welding and installation of studs in the new mounting system for the tanks, I wanted to make sure that I produced the, at least the lower end of the um, control panel mount to ensure that it doesn't encroach or rub on the fuel tank or oil tank. I'll just go ahead and mount the oil tank on the uh, Canadian isolation mounts. Ah, there we go. Because another clearance, I've checked it, but another clearance is between the carburetor and the, uh, the oil tank.
Perfect. Closer by the day guys, some more systems, components mounted, fuel and oil tanks, radiator, all key components and as a bit of a byproduct of that we've got the console mount sorted. Uh, we've got an oil cooler and a coolant tank that are going to go on here but another step closer and uh, getting very close to running some plumbing now and firing this machine up. So thanks again for watching guys. Until next time. Cheers.